Welcome to AVDP number three. This is uh, the Expendables edition. Expendables 3, episode 3. My name's Yuri Supanitsky. I'm Alex Krasny. And uh, today we're here to talk about a bunch of shit. Hope you're ready. It's yeah. going to be good. Top of the list is Expendables 3, which we just got out of the theater. Just saw it. Just now. We're fresh. Oh my god. And let me tell you, I fucking loved it. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Big fan. Uh, one concern I had is somebody told me that it was PG-13 instead of Rated R. I was concerned. I honestly wouldn't have even noticed if I didn't know. And the first one, which I, I by far think is the most disappointing one at this point, is also PG-13. So I was worried. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this I, did, I would have known. Uh, there's a lot less gore, but it really doesn't matter. That's not the important part, for sure, I think. You know, it's, no. it's the action and the general vibe of the movie. Mm -hmm. And... If you don't know what The Expendables is, you're fucking up. I'm not going to tell you what it is because you should know. But honestly, it, it's just great. I really enjoyed it. Uh, can't wait to see it. And I liked it so much that I liked it despite my movie theater experience today. Tell them. Let me tell you just, just generally how I fucking go to see movies, right? Now, I'm not a religious man. <laughs> but, but a movie theater is a holy place to me. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't want to fucking hear whispers. Be respectful about your fucking popcorn and your and your crunching and your wrappers and your movement. If you want to fucking make all the noise in the world, see, I'm I'm I think constantly when I'm in theater about minimizing my my noise. You know, you're courteous, very courteous, and constant. And I, it's a stressful life. I am telling you, it is so stressful to constantly be thinking about. Oh man, I hope I'm not annoying the people around me. But apparently, nobody else gives a fuck. You know, some not, some don't. Nobody cares. Well, well, anyway, so we're sitting there. And these these two people behind us, this real cool dude and his and his babe, <laughs> real cool dude and babe, are just they're whispering all through the previews. And I'm like, all right, I give you the benefit of the doubt, you know. Previews are previews. Previews are previews. That's not serious business yet. But then the movie starts. My boy Wesley Snipes is on screen. My boy Stallone is on screen. My boy Statham is on screen. And all I can fucking focus on is uh, uh, what were they saying? Fucking, I don't know. I just hear these whispers, and it's like he, she would keep asking him a question. He'd be like, "Oh yeah, babe, it's this, it's this guy, babe, babe, it's this Who's guy." Who's that black guy? Yeah. Oh, yeah, babe. Was it Snipes? Babe. <laughs> Fucking a. He said babe a lot. Yeah. So finally, I, about maybe ten minutes in the movie, I just had enough. So I had to turn around. I go, "Are you gonna fucking talk the whole movie?" And the guy gives me this look, like. Dude. Like he's about to say like like something like, really clever. Dude, it's just a movie, man. Yeah. Nothing. Just looks at me. Well, he looks like your fucking intimidating appearance. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, if I pulled that shit off, it, if I said that to him, it would be different. I Yuri, Yuri looks like a lumberjack ready to fucking chop. I think I grew a beard pretty recently, and I think it's the best thing. When you got that there. aggressive bald head, yeah, too. bald head, beard, look like a fucking. Ready, you're ready to get a, yeah. you're ready to headbutt a motherfucker in the face. So if, if I can use this look to get quiet in the theaters, oh man, I'm gonna use it. Now, oddly, I didn't hear a thing. Yeah, I don't understand. I was either. sitting two seats away from you. I, I, I mean, I heard them at the beginning, but yeah. then I really wasn't bothered at all. It, it, it might be a weird sound I, thing. I also think it's one of those things that, like, if you become aware of it, it's where you, it's one of those that you can't now, stop thinking. About. Something I was aware of is yeah. all the goddamn crinkling. The guy, so, right? So what's the de here's the thing, okay? Uh, if you're a movie theater and you're dealing with like, why they have extra extra loud bags? What's that about? Everything like you want to serve candy? Fine, open the candy, put it in a little dish for me. You know what I mean? I don't want to... Don't give them these fucking packages that you can crinkle all through the movie. Yeah. The, the paper bags, man. Yeah. They're so... You go, go for popcorn, it's like you're breaking twigs in you a know, I've, movie. I've never even thought about this, but there are a million better ways to serve the shit they serve you at a theater yeah. in less noisy containers. Right. It's weird. And, and okay, aside from that, even as a person, we're in an action movie. Explosions every two minutes. And there's a, a quiet dialogue scene, you're going to start digging into your fucking popcorn? Like, you, not the time. Yeah. Why don't you wait for the gunshots? Just all I ask is people be courteous. You know, I just want you to think about your people, the people around you in a theater. And it's also another thing if it's a packed theater. But this is like there's like twenty people max in the theater, and everybody can fucking hear you. Yeah, it was not packed, even no. though it's like the first day it's out. Nobody cared, I guess. I, it's a Thursday, so I guess not a lot of people. Are yeah, and the, probably, it's not like a big city or anything. Yeah, yeah. So the the point is just even though everybody was fucking on me, which I did not appreciate, mm. I love the movie. I mean, I mean, w compared to the to the first and second one, what did you what did you think? You like it more or less? Is it your favorite? Uh, it's well, mm, I need to watch them all like in one session, mm -hmm. which I plan on doing. I feel like there wasn't as much action in this one as was in the second one. I feel like there was more f like 
action sequences in f- quicker succession. And they were probably a little more interesting. In the second one? Yeah, there was more f- uh, hand-to-hand. The gunshots are, you know, they're fine, but I like the martial arts. I think Statham does a really great job doing yeah. all that martial arts stuff he does. Even when Stallone's punching dudes, I love it. And there was less of that in this movie. Uh, I still liked it a lot. You know, there's a lot of good gun and, like, action sequences where they're jumping and running. And it was great. But uh, I, I, th- I think I like it slightly less than the second one. I, I think I like him more, but not by a ton. Mm-hmm. Uh, the problem is when you get so many characters in the movie, you've got to give each of them their moment. You know, you've got to give this guy his moment, his cool fight, and yeah. this guy's cool fight, and the chick a cool fight. You're right. And when there's so many, it works great in the character scenes. You know, the, the funny dialogue and the banter. Love that. But it the act it the action scenes suffer as a result. Yeah. And, and my one other big thing about this movie is that it had a lot of like young people. There were new people in there. Yeah. And I don't know. Maybe we just missed it. I don't know who these people are. I I don't know. I mean, I know that at least one of them is like an MMA or UFC fighter. The girl. Yeah. Yeah, so there's like this UFC fighter fighter chick, and, and she's pretty bad. And they were fine. I like them. Yeah, they're fine. I just know who they were. It's kind of every every person is yeah. like, there's this guy who's been in 30 movies, and I know exactly everything about him. And then yeah. there's these four that are like new teammates. I'm like, who the fuck are these guys? I don't know who they are. I don't yeah. care about them. It, it's very weird. And like, it, it's almost sort of a playing on the, uh, like, we're old. Here's like us passing the torch thing. But not really. Like, the, not even to that sense. Yeah. We're going to spoil the movie a little bit here. It's, Not mean, too much. I mean, it's, it, you don't go for the plot. Yeah, you know? bang bang, kill kill. But like they basically go like one of the, like Terry Crews gets injured at the like, very beginning of the movie. He gets she gets shot by Mel Gibson, who's like the bad guy, and for like really no reason, which what I don't understand. Stallone's like fuck the rest of my team. I'm recruiting new people, and and I don't really get why because he's going on a suicide mission. Yeah, and he's got a team full of like wet veterans who want to die, who have a reason to get this guy. He's like, nope. Getting a t- bunch of young, promising individuals. Yeah, uh, 20-somethings. Yeah. And, who, like, and lead them to a suicide. Who have their instead. whole life ahead of them. Yeah, it's really weird. Right? And it's like, the, all these guys, have, they all like Terry Crews, yeah. they're bros, and they want to avenge him. Yeah. And Stone's like, well, you're not going to die for me. So they're not dying for you at this point. They yeah. want to avenge Terry Crews. It's a very weird, like, dick move it by made, Stone. It made no sense. I, do you agree with me on this? Oh, yeah. But so, it, it, I knew it wouldn't matter because I knew they'd all get together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, as soon as that happened. But yeah, like, he's like, oh, I'm going to break the team up and I'm going to find a suicide squad. And then he, like, hires these, like, young kids who. Shouldn't be getting killed. Yeah. Because really they're brand new. They're like 25. That yeah, was pretty weird. But, yeah. they, you know, it was whatever. It yeah, was. it was fine. It was, and they had some of the cool scenes. And I, I kind of liked... They were a nice... Um, they gave a little nice dichotomy between here's how the new age does it. It's like, you know, we got computers. We break into shit. Yeah, they're versus, hackers and shit. Versus the old just run and gun, which is great. Yeah, it was yeah, yeah. That was fun. And a lot of great great references. The good dialogue. A lot of references. Yeah. I don't want to spoil those, though. No, I won't spoil those. I'll just say that if you are a fan of the Stallone movies, the Arnold movies, all the all the 80s movies, to the point where you remember dialogue and get references, you'll love this movie. Oh, uh, Chuck Norris is not in it. Yeah, I didn't. I said really no, but yeah, he, I thought he was. I thought well, he had my camera. The rumor I heard mm-hmm. was the reason it's PG thirteen is because Chuck Norris is in it and he doesn't want to be in a rated R movie. So I'm waiting for Chuck Norris to the lone wolf to appear, and he just never does. I, I'll tell you this: there's been three movies. Two of them have been PG thirteen. No Chuck Norris. One of them is R, Chuck Norris. Yeah, he's been in the only R movie. Yeah. If for all I know, he demanded it was rated R. Yeah, maybe Chuck Norris is a vindictive, like violent. Just tyrant. If it's not R, I'm not going to yeah. be in your movie. And Stallone's then. like the peaceful guy being like, what about the kids? Stallone? Yeah. <laughs> Expendables 4, rated, rated G. Yeah. <laughs> All talking animals. The like cartoon. Like a whole team of, of veterans. Yeah, so we recommend it. Go see yeah. it. Well, and, if you like, you know, if you like action. And one of my favorite characters who I did not expect to like him much was uh, Antonio Banderas. Mm. Real funny, real good. Loved him. It was great. He was yeah. a comic relief, but mm-hmm. still, you know, hilar- yeah. hilarious, still fighting dudes. Kick-ass. and So, it's great. if you're a fan of the action movies, if you just love action movies in general... You'll love it. It's great. It's fun. I highly recommend it. Yeah, I lo- these guys all yeah. look so so. They look so old and beat up. Mm-hmm. I love them. You know, they're all they just they just look that they, way. They look weathered. Stallone. I mean, man, that guy looks like he went to hell and back. Mm-hmm. You know, Dolph Lundgren. Ugh. That guy's like his he, face. He feels like he's a robot. Yeah, like or a zombie or something not inhuman almost. I look at his face every now and then, and I just gotta think like. Did did you just do that to yourself? Like, how does the face get that? He looks fucked like a, up? he's so gaunt. It's so yeah. sunken. He's like a ghoul. Yeah, it's crazy, and he's so huge too. I don't know how he hasn't played Frankenstein like a, a new Frankenstein. Yeah, movie. Frankenstein. I mean, they call him Frankenstein. It's perfect. And you know, let's talk about uh, Mel Gibson a little bit. Oh god, he's the villain, Mel Gibson. Uh, he's great. That guy, he in his eyes, you see insanity. It couldn't put it better. And I mean, I don't know if that's if that's acting or if that's just Mel Gibson. I, I it, feel. Like- 
It's amazing. You read novels, and it's like, it's like I saw like a glint of insanity in this guy's mm-hmm. eye. Mel Gibson is fucking insane. He can act that. Yeah. You ever watch uh, Top, I, the, Top Model I, with Tyra Banks? I don't know if he's acting. I don't know if he is. Smile with your eyes? Yeah, like like she does this thing where you smile with your eyes. He's insane with his eyes. And I believe it. Like you look at him, you're like, that mother I don't wanna I don't wanna go near that guy. There's a scene where him and Stallone are bantering in a car. And I I was like, just let him go. I I was terrified. Yeah. Like, you know. I didn't want him to have be near him anymore. No, no. Like that was too scary. Yeah. That was awesome. So go see it for that. I mean it's it's a great film. If you've seen Mission Impossible Three, there's a great scene where Philip Seymour Hoffman Tom Cruise. Uh Philip Seymour Hoffman is saying like oh I'm gonna I'm gonna hurt your wife. He's doing this with Philip Seymour Hoffman voice, but he, he's like he, he's scary. He's not like yelling or screaming. He's just threatening with this like direct mm-hmm. matter of fact way. Mm-hmm. And that's how Mel Gibson is acting. Like, yeah. I, where's Tom Cruise at, by the way? Uh he's still doing shit. He just came out. No, uh, I mean where's he in general? I mean why is he not in Expendables? Oh, he'd be great. He's, he's an action star. I bet he thinks he's too young still, and he wouldn't do it. He's not washed up. Yeah. Too good, huh? Tom he was Cruise? just in an action movie. So you know, you can still be in an action movie and still be in this. Yeah, I would. I, I liked. I, Harrison I, I Ford was just in Indiana Jones. You know. Yeah, that's a good point. Right. Pretty recently. I li- I would like to see him. Yeah. A villain, good villain. Villain. Tom Cruise, the yeah. villain. I would. Yeah, you're right. That he'd be a great villain. Just All right, crazy. let's move it. Let's move it. Yeah. All right, we got some feedback on YouTube from Give Mongo Ball. Yeah. By the way, when you guys leave feedback or suggestions, uh, one, you know, you can email us at uh, avdpodcast at gmail dot com, or you can leave them on the YouTube comments. But leave your, leave a name so we know who to refer to you as. Otherwise, we'll have like potato in anus. <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> as our as our, our reader. Just the first name's fine. So okay, here's what he says. He says, uh, "You guys are great. Thank you very much." Mm-hmm. Topic suggestion. Uh, more and more videos lately of U.S. law enforcement overstepping their bounds, going viral. Law enforcement apologists and officers assaulting citizens for filming them with smartphones. It's happening in St. Louis recently. Any thoughts? And as with reference to the. Uh, Fergus, Ferguson. Ferguson, Missouri. Ferguson, Missouri, yeah. having this, they're having a real fucked up situation over there. To, to give a little background quickly, if you give don't it, know. I don't know what it is. Basically, there was a, an incident where a police officer shot an unarmed black teenager. And that's undisputed. The, the, the teenager was unarmed. Uh, white cop, black teenager. Like, pretty racially, racially charged situation. And there's been... Disputes about you know what was there an altercation was the teenager violent it was the officer defending himself some suspicious circumstances to say the least but but that's not really the issue here but basically what's happened since then is the whole air, area which is um, a majority of African Americans has started like protesting and what white people too they started protesting saying you know like like no justice no peace give us a name of the officer and these protests have been going on throughout the city these last couple of days and. Pretty much yesterday, shit got a little crazy. Like, basically what happened is these protests are for the most part peaceful. It's people just assembling on the streets, chanting, exercising their First Amendment right to assemble it and, you know, speak their mind, more or less. Now, there have been some violent incidents. I'm not saying there haven't. But those people should be arrested. You know, if you're throwing... The violent ones, yeah. But not the innocent bystanders who are standing there. And the police in Ferguson, first of all, this is a town of 21,000 people. To give you an idea, we have in the suburbs around here in the Twin Cities, there are similarly sized towns, probably a little smaller than that, who have, and I, I looked this up recently, like a 12, 12 to 20 police officers, right? That's like the, a lot of them have very small police forces. Ferguson has a fucking SWAT team. Like, have you seen these pictures? Yeah, I, I was wondering about that. Why yeah. are there so many police there? I have no idea. How do they even get the tax money for it that? It looks actually? like some shit out of the Dark Knight Rising. Wow. They're they're wearing body armor. They've got these SWAT tanks full, you know, uh, gas masks. And they're shooting tear gas and stun grenades and rubber bullets into this crowd. This, and these, this is a crowd of, uh, you know, innocent people, kids, parents with their kids. And a, a lot of them are reporters. And this is what kind of what's fucked up. Is this where it gets Tell pretty you what, crazy? Don't bring your kids to a protest. Yeah, that's f- fucking stupid. You're, but be a responsible. Parent. But people live in these neighborhoods. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, there's kids. But so basically, what started happening, and this is where people got kind of crazy, is the cops started like confiscating people's cell phones and telling people they can't record them. And I think this is what this feedback is in reference mm-hmm, to. Mm-hmm. And I, I've heard a lot about this over the years. So, you know, people are like, oh. Cops will say, you can't record me, give me the phone. People are like, you don't have a right to record the police. Let me just tell you real quickly, 
you do. You can absolutely record the police. This has been decided by courts in pretty much every state. And in every state in America, you are allowed to videotape the police. The only thing you cannot do is physically interfere with like an arrest. Mm -hmm. So when you say, when a cop says you can't do this, they're wrong. Like they're lying or they just don't know. Is it, is it illegal for them to lie? Well, are they breaking the law when they lie about no, that? No, they're not breaking the law. When they tell you that it's illegal to record them and they're straight up lying about the law, is that against the law? Here, here's the thing. I don't. I honestly don't. It's not against the law, but it might be like some kind of tort. You know, some kind of personal civil suit. I, I, I don't okay. know what it is. Right. I have to think about it or look it up. But I'm guessing what they'll say most times is, "I thought I was acting in good faith. I thought it was. I didn't know." Well, I heard that ignorance of the law is no excuse. Yeah, but it's not like I said. It might fucking I don't think cop, it's you pig, piece of shit. So. And I'm not saying all cops are bad here. You know, I'm not saying that. But here's the thing. The courts have said that there's a cops have no reasonable expectation of privacy when they're out in public on duty, right? So you can, they can be filmed. Yeah, okay. They so should expect it. It's legally be filmed. But cops have a qualified immunity in courts. And the qualified immunity says that in order to for them to be punished or to be violating you know, something like this, to be violating a law... It has to be a well-established law, a well-established field. And what the courts have been saying lately, basically the loophole these cops have been getting off of when they confiscate cell phones, is that the whole idea of, because cell phones and videotapes are like relatively new in the law world, they've been getting off on this loophole where the judges say, well, based on the language requiring it to be a well-established field, videotaping police is not well-established. It's becoming well-established. But cops have been surviving off this loophole, right? Okay. Does that make sense to you? Uh, I mean, no. I mean, basically, courts have set a standard. There's a standard that says cops are immune from lawsuits unless the thing they're violating has, like, been well-known forever. Like, everybody knows about this. And the thing is, like like we're talking about, not everybody knows about this. the right to record police officers. Well, they've had cameras for 40 plus 50, 60 years. And, and believe me, it's stupid as fuck. Right. But in the law world, you know, 40 to 50 years isn't that long. Do you know I mean, what I'm saying? Well, I don't agree with you there. I, 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 I say the same thing. It's becoming more and more. And every time, I'm saying, every time a court has come up. Well, you know, okay, whatever. So It's what, okay. What, so, what are, what are I mean, I, I, what do I think? Yeah. I think you should always record all the police. Absolutely. If you're a civil servant serving yeah. the, the public good, and, you know, if you're National Guard, if you're any kind of public servant, mm. recording you should be encouraged. Yeah. And then those tapes should be sent to your commanding officer, or your fucking higher power, all the time. And you should know every time you fuck up. Because you're paid by the, the citizens. Mm-hmm. So if you're, you're fucking around, then you deserve to get caught. You know? There's no he, privacy for you. Here's, here's a perfect... There's two ways to handle this. One is to, you know, confront the citizen taping the incident. Taping you as an officer. Like, he, and the other one is to do the right, what I think is the right way to do it. And I saw this. Uh, there's a person taping a cop who was arresting this girl who was, like, shoplifted, mm-hmm. right? And she was, like, squirming around. He was a little bit rough with her, but no more rough, I think, than... You. Like, she was a resisting arrest. Okay. Like, a, a rightful arrest. She was resisting, squirming, like, trying to get out of the handcuffs, and he was trying to get, get control of her. Mm-hmm. And this person's taping, and this guy who's taping is yelling, whoa, she's just a girl. She's just a little girl. Like, let her go. And the cop goes, after, like, he's breathing hard because he's just been wrestling with this girl, uh-huh. right? And he gets her in the car, and he goes... Sir, like, let me explain. And the guy goes, no, no, like, you were uh, uh, harassed. And that girl goes, no, sir, you have a right to tape me, and that's fine, but you, I have a right to explain what happened. And he goes, that girl could have been a danger to herself, could have been a danger to me. Like, all she has to do is get loose and, like, grab my gun, do anything, like, hurt somebody. She was resisting arrest. Like, you may think I, I was using excessive force, but, like, these are the techniques we're trained in. I did only so much as I had to to get her in. If she had not been resisting, I would not have hurt her. So he explained himself. Mm-hmm. He said, you have the right to do this, but, like, here's what happened. And if you don't understand, like, that's fine. Like, my, I'll be investigated, but, like, I will be fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, there, it's, it's a weird thing with police because, yeah, that I'm, I mostly want to, you know, it, here's what I think yeah. is going on here. When police are getting, like, it, what's happening in Ferguson right now is shit's getting fucked up. Mm-hmm. There's like, they're shooting shit, they're shooting rubber bullets, they're tear gassing a bunch of people, they're confiscating phones, there's a media blackout. Yeah. They arrested two reporters? Yep. They arrested reporters. 
the freedom of the press. I mean, there's a freedom for everybody to record, but the freedom of the press is so well found. Like everybody knows that the press can be here recording. Yeah. And they're they're arresting journalists. They're tear gassing journalists. They're taking their equipment. It's unheard of. And it's it not. It's insane. not guys. It's not fucking wartime. What it, the hell's going on? It looks like a war scene. Yeah. yeah. It this makes isn't, no sense. This isn't like you know the the fucking. The, the, the Jews rioting in, in, you know, Gaza or whatever. This isn't a war. This is like, Louis, you know, citizens of some small suburb, like, sitting cross like in the street. Yeah. All of a sudden, there's tear gas and rubber bullets going on. Reporters are getting arrested for no reason. It's fucking crazy. In a, look, look this shit up. Like, these two reporters were arrested in a McDonald's. Huffington Post and yeah. a New York Times yeah. journalist. For for being on their cell phones. Yeah. Like, arrest report. Are you reporting this? Get the fuck in the car. And they're, they're tweeting it as this is happening. Yeah, like, okay, I'm being arrested now. Okay. Uh... And- Here's what, let me tell you this. Yeah. Why, why isn't it like the National Guard involved? I don't know. I, I don't understand how something hasn't been done here because this is. I like, could not think of a more clear violation of civil liberties. Our fucking boy Barack. Does he know this is going on? I don't know. Where's our boy Barack? Fucking sitting in his throne. Like this is when when a small town has more army, you know, like more like military personnel than I think I've seen in some war zones. There's a problem. You know what, it, it, it's like, when the police start act, running amok, yeah. and, and people, like, even if it's all a lie, yeah. let's assume, just for fun, that the, the genius, pl- 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 like, spin in what's happening in Ferguson... Oh, is and like, I, I've seen some people claim that. It's all a lie, okay? Mm-hmm. And the people are just tweeting really creatively, and the police are not doing this. And these videotapes are forged. Yeah, let's just that. say it's all fake. Yeah, real clever. This doesn't happen that often. When it does happen, I think a higher power should interfere, and the higher power in this case would be the National Guard, the FBI. Oh, not God. No, I don't mean God. I mean, I don't mean <laughs> okay, our yeah. Lord. I mean, just like a higher authority should go, okay, well, look, the National Guard is going to come in. Yeah. And they sit in like 40 guys and like, okay, what, let's talk about it. And if and they come in and it's a fucking war zone, the National Guard goes, all right, look, Sheriff, this isn't a fucking World War II simulation. You know, yeah. we're gonna, you're going to put you away for a while. The government's got to interfere because they, they can't let this continue. And because all that's happening now is everybody in the, all of America is watching the story going, I hate cops. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't want to hate cops. I don't either. I, when I went to school in Madison, I think Madison police are fantastic. They were always helpful, always considered. They were realistic. They didn't waste your time. If You know, if you were walking home drunk, they'd stop you and be sure, can you get home? Do your friends take you home? Mm. They wouldn't fuck on you. They wouldn't waste your time. They wouldn't violate. I, I heard very good things in Madison. Mm-hmm. And I want to like the police. I really do. Yeah. I don't want to see shit like this happen. No. I don't. Every time I see a story of police brutalizing somebody, it's, you know, yeah. I hate that cop. Yeah. The problem is, though, that cop's fucking everybody up. Yeah. That's just, it's a shame, you know, because that's... So I think the government needs and to I, step in here. And, and I get it's a tough job. It, yeah, it's definitely. Tough. You know, there's nobody says, thank you, officer. Like, I'm yeah. glad you, you know, you fucked up these kids. Yeah. But those kids are drug dealers. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, you got to fuck them up sometimes. Yeah. All right, well... We don't. Uh, I'm, I'm all about uh, recording public officials all the time, and I'm I'm in full agreement on this too. I, I'm all about recording everything. As a matter of fact, I like to record everything. Yeah. What if everything was just recorded? I love it. That'd be great. I I don't want to derail this, but I you know I I, I believe in like truth coming out. Yeah. Like, I want I want everything to be out there and let the truth rise to the top. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I I, don't, I know there's gonna be fucking arguments about like oh well you know corruption power you know people who have the more the louder voice will get to the top. But like, I don't know. I just, I want more. No, but that's the whole thing. Yeah. If everything's recorded and every, you can get the tapes, then the louder yeah. voice won't go to the top. You can always get the recording. Yeah, I think that's fair. But yeah, so I, I, I think this is fucked. I think everybody should look into this. Don't look to, It's weird. Like, I was flipping through channels yesterday yeah, looking for this. And I, I had a hard time finding it on some news channels because it is weirdly... Well, they re- won't let reporters in. Yeah. I mean, I, all, of the, all the shit is like people tweeting it like while they're in the neighborhood hiding under a fucking and, bush. And I was, there was... I forgot who it was. The MSNBC. Some somebody was interviewing one of the reporters of the, the local reporters, and he was like, "How? Like, what? Le- what constitutional or legal authority do you have for this?" And all the guy could say was, "Well, the the ma- the mayor thinks he's really you know doing the right thing here. He's not using too much force." And so well, you're, you're not answering the as question. As long as the mayor thinks he's doing the right thing, yeah, I think we're okay. I didn't even tell you this. part of the reason. So the mayor threw out a suggestive curfew, saying you should be home at this time. Not a real curfew, not a not a law legal curfew, uh-huh. and then they were arresting people for violating the suggestion. The curfew, yeah, the oh, suggested go, curfew. Go to bed at nine. Yeah, so it's it, it just crazy. So look into it. Fuck that. Fuck that. All right, should we move on? Let's go to talk about Robin Williams. Yeah, Robin Williams, he's dead. It's been a fucked up week, you know. Uh, it's you know, my friend at work told me that 
think of an actor or or per- person mm-hmm. who's had more of an influence on you as a child than Robin Williams. It's and not even as a child. It's weird to me that I've watched different Robin Williams movies, even no matter what time he made them, through different points in my life, and they've all affected me. You know, when I was younger, it was you know Mrs. Doubtfire. When I was a little bit older, it was Dead Poet Society. Mm. And when I was even older, it was Good Will Hunting. Mm-hmm. And I felt like at every point in my life, there was a movie where I felt like Robin Williams' performance impacted me. Mm-hmm. And I he, just... He was, yeah, I mean, he, and he was in all the yeah. shows. He did stand-up. He was in Aladdin. But the th- what I love about him most is he just seemed like a genuinely good person. He was a great guy. You know? And, and everything I've heard since he died has come out is that he's a, he's a caring, good human being. And... I'm I'm really sad about it. I it really bums me out. I think it bums me out more than I even wanted to admit when it first happened. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of it's kind of fucked up my week a little bit. Like I've been pretty sad about it. Yeah, I've thought about it many times. And and I in conjunction, I think the thing I want to talk about out of this, aside from you know just in general how sad I am about this, is I heard today like uh, Zelda Williams, Robin Williams' daughter, who's a grown woman, left Twitter. She she left Twitter, and she's always had a pretty good Twitter presence because of. She cited the trolls. And I think that's so fucked up. I don't know why people, when celebrities die, feel the need to shit on their lives. You know? And I've seen this consistently. With, with Paul Walker, when he died recently, people were cracking jokes about the Fast and the Furious, what a shitty walk actor Paul Walker was. What gives you the fucking right? This is a human being. You know? Like... Sure, he wasn't a great actor, but he's not go, a bad person. I want to see what they fucking do for their jobs and shit on them for a while. And and then do you remember the the Oprah Win- or sorry, the Oprah Win- excuse me, Whitney Houston incident? How could I forget? Yeah, there was this weird thing, and I actually wrote an article about it on Krasny's website. I'll link to it. Yeah, we'll link to it about when when Whitney Houston died. There was this weird uproar all over the internet about how why are we getting giving so much credit to Whitney Houston's death? A drug a drug addict. A drug addict. A piece of shit. But no. Media coverage to the dead soldiers. The soldiers. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, you, you can read the article if you're really curious about what to say, but it, that, to me that's ridiculous because they're completely non-comparable. They're two different things. I, just read the article if you're really I mean, curious. just, you know, somebody yeah. died and people can care. Yeah. You know, people... Whitney Houston's songs were important yeah. to people and you remember them. And Every, it's, like, it's a shame she died. Yeah. And Michael Jackson died too and that was a shame. Yeah. Everybody mourns their own you, way. You can, you can care. Yeah. I don't know why people think they have to have a monopoly on grief. And that's what I think is really fucked up. Hmm. You know, everybody's like, oh man, like th- th- this is this death is more important to me than your death. It's this weird like like behavior about people like dying, especially celebrities. You know what would be a good domain name? What? Monopolyongrief.com. Yeah, what are you going to put on it? I don't know, but that's a good one. You ready for it? Don't steal it out there. Let's, uh, Can let's, we edit this out of the podcast? Let's have a... Like, <laughs> let's have a toast to uh, Robin Williams. To Robin Williams. Everybody, get, go get a drink. To the chief. Oh, God, it's fucking sad. Yeah. Watch, and, you know, everybody knows Rob Williams for his funny roles. Go watch his serious roles, which I think are some of his best Them, work. That hospital movie with Robert De Niro made me cry every time I watch it. Oh, my God, I know exactly what you're talking about. We're awake or... Something. I don't know what it's called. Robin, or, I mean, Robert De Niro, Robin Williams movie. You I can know, find it. I know. He's like... Awakenings? I think it's Awakenings. Something like this. Yeah. And Robert De Niro's like uh, he's all yeah. he's in coma, and then he comes up with a cure, and he becomes a like a like a real person mm-hmm. for a while, and then then he goes back into a coma, and it's the saddest thing in the world. And Robin Williams is in that, and that, that's I remember that movie very vividly. I think it's called Awakenings. I'll, I'll double check. We'll Look put it up. It, we'll we'll yeah, post it we'll, here. Maybe that will put it. Watch up. that. Watch Insomnia, where Robin Williams is a bad guy. Watch One Hour Photo. Watch Good, you know Goodwill Hunting. Shit. Insomnia is the movie. I thought One Hour Photo was the movie where it was in Alaska. No, no that's, that's that was Insomnia, Insomnia with Al Pacino. With Al Pacino. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. Check out his serious roles. If, that guy had, it, yeah. had some life. If on. you think he was just a funny guy, he could act. People don't give him enough credit for his serious roles, and I think you should... Give really, him some credit, you really bitch. Really appreciate it. Give him some fucking credit. God damn it. All right, let's, uh, let's change gears. All right, Pete. Let's change gears. We're talking... This is a question Yuri brought up to... Uh, he didn't know that I... Uh, well, you start. Yeah, so I... I Recently, when I was studying for the bar exam, I wanted to get a little more fit. You know, I, I, like, I usually like to work out, but I, I don't eat that well, and I don't really monitor my, my health. And I was so busy during the bar exam that I, I wanted to find other ways to uh, be healthier. So I, I found first I found this app, MyFitnessPal, which lets you like track your, what you eat and stuff. And then I, I noticed all these apps and shit you could sync to it about like um, 
things that basically monitor your steps, how you sleep, like all these different fitness things. In Nike your life. Fuel Band. Yeah, like Nike Fit, Fuel Fit. Band and shit. Yeah. And I was like, man, like I, I kind of want to get one of these. Like, do they really? What effect do they have in your life? Are they worth it? What features do you want? And I've been seeing all these stories on. Oh, there it is. I have one here. I've been seeing all these stories on. Um, uh, that the Apple iWatch is coming out. Right. And everybody's getting really excited about that. I'm hearing more and more shit about that. And I just want to... You, you have one, which I didn't even know at first. Yep. What do you uh, think of it? Well, okay. So we got this at work. We did mm-hmm. a program, a uh, well, fitness program, yeah. where uh, we broke into teams and competed to see who can get the most steps and weight loss in a certain amount of time. Yeah. So in part of the program was a $50 buy-in mm-hmm. to uh, get a Fitbit. So we all got Fitbits. And, uh, you know, I used it for a long time. It's just a little pink. Well, mine's pink because yeah. that's how I roll. No doubt. So you got a little pink bracelet. Here's actually the the fit the bit itself is this little tiny thing. Oh shit! You can keep that in your pocket, mm-hmm. or you can do whatever you want with it. You know, right. it comes in as a bracelet. If, if you can't see, it's just it's literally the size of like it's a, a rubber eraser. One of those ones. A you rubber can, eraser, yeah. yeah. It's a little tiny rubber eraser. Yeah. Uh, it goes into a, a bracelet, mm. and you can tap on it. My, mine's out of battery, and it's been out of battery for months. But you can all you can do with it is tap on it to see how many dots you have out of five. Mm-hmm. Five dots means you walked ten thousand steps. And then every 2,000 step lower is a dot. Mm-hmm. There's an iPhone app or an Android app that actually tells you what you, you're up to. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's very, it's great. It tracks your steps. I mean, it cares about how you move it. You know, yeah. so you can just shake it and cheat. Sure, but you're doing it for yourself. So, that, um, that's for basic bitches. Yeah, uh, I found it very helpful when I used it. Uh, th- not because it, you know, tracking your, it doesn't do anything for you. But just having, it's kind of like tying a ribbon around your finger. Yeah. The fact that you're wearing a bracelet that wants you to walk 10,000 steps and you like look at it all the time, you're like, shit, I'm way behind. I, I should walk, you know, I should do something. Yeah. So it does, it's a constant reminder on your wrist to, hey, motherfucker, go, go work out. I I found that, so I, I don't have the, the fit, you know, the Fitbit, but I do have like an app that just tracks my steps throughout the day. So it's okay. running on my phone constantly. Is that not as good? Because you don't, doesn't it remind you it's, constantly? It's, it's not as good. It, it's uh, not as accurate. Oh. And it doesn't track your actual like, calorie burn as well, you know? Yeah, well, this doesn't track anything beyond steps. Well, I I've, I've don't know. Is this the one that tracks like, when you take stairs and stuff? Uh, not that I think. Well, I don't know. So, see, I don't know much about it. But I, I've noticed that when I count my steps, when I'm aware that, like, this is how many steps I've taken through a day, I find ways to make my, my walks longer. I'll take the stairs. I'll take the long way. I'll park further away from the, the entrance to places. Mm-hmm. I'll do little things that I, I think are honestly contributing to my health. And I found myself losing weight just naturally. Yeah. You know? Sure. So I like this. So, I mean, do you, th- you think it was a good experience? Yeah, you know, I do. And here's the problem with it. Yeah. The fucking battery. Mm-hmm. It runs out of battery. Mm-hmm. And then you got to charge it. And then, you you know, I'm at work and it's out of battery. And I tap on it and it's like, oh, I'm out of battery. So I, I'm at work, so I don't have my charger because it's at home. So I can't, that day is wasted. No steps tracked. So I, it, it interfaces with my fitness pal. And it subtracts your calories you burn from your steps from my fitness pal. So that's great. I love that. Yeah. But then so I get home and then I forget to charge it. Then I go back to work. It's not charged. Or I take my charger to work. Then I forget it at work. Bottom line is it keeps running out of fucking battery. How long do you see the battery life is? Uh, it was two days at first. Got to about to a day and a half toward the end. I and mean, that, that's frustrating. It's You know, it's not a short battery life yeah. by any means. I mean, two full days without charging it is a lot. If I would plan better and like have it by my bed or something... But the problem is you just forget and then you miss a day and then it fucks your week up because you're trying to burn so much in a week mm-hmm. and it gets so weird. But you know what I'm thinking? If I just wear the bracelet for no reason but to wear the bracelet, I it might be just about as good. You because so? the whole point is it reminds me to do more. I mean, hitting the goal is arbitrary. Like yeah. hitting the 10,000 step goal, you get a gold star. Congratulations. The thing is like right now I just sit on my leather ass. If I wore the bracelet, maybe I'd move a little bit more. I don't know. Yeah, like today I found myself... I was like, yeah, yeah, I haven't gotten up in a while. I picked up a document I had to read at my desk, and I just kind of walked around for a little bit reading it, you know, just to, to get a little, little step in my step around Walk the office. while you're reading. Just a little bit, just, you know, 10 minutes, just to get some exercise. I went down to get a coffee just to, to move around. I like it. Yeah. But so what Krasny's saying is save 100 bucks, just get the bracelet. Just, yeah, you don't even, you just well, get a bracelet and says work out on it. So, I mean, your biggest thing is it sounds like you had trouble with the, with remembering to charge it. I'm sure yeah. not everybody will have That's that my problem. biggest problem. What what features do you want in a in something like this? What do you think will really put it over the edge to make it uh, mass marketable? Well, okay, I mean, this by itself, Fitbit does it's a it's a bracelet that does nothing but track your steps. Yeah, it's useless. Yeah, here's a watch that I wear that tells me what time it is. Yeah, what? Why can't my watch tell me what steps I walk? You know what I mean? Now there there are some that do that. Yeah, the Pebble does it. The the Misfit Shine, I think. Yes, you know what? I love it. That looks. I nice. want one bracelet that does multiple things. Yeah, that's why I'm so jacked about this iWatch, the Apple's iWatch. I, I was really hesitant about it 
when I first heard about like a year ago. Yeah. But now that I realize it's becoming more of a fitness focused idea, yeah. I really like it. I want to watch it does more things. I I every the, the fitness trackers I've seen, they're great, but they don't do enough. I want one that gets my heartbeat, that tracks mm-hmm. my sleep, mm-hmm. that that is a full on and, and the other thing is like when I when I'm exercising, when I'm on the treadmill, you're tracking my steps, but you're not necessarily tracking my, my calorie burn. Right. You know, or like when I'm doing push ups. Like I want something that's more aware of what what I'm doing and like being aware of okay, well you're the, you you weigh this much, you you're doing push ups, it seems like I feel your heartbeat ac- accelerating. How many calories did you probably burn there? Well, I think this many. You know, and I know there's apps that like you enter your activity and then it'll it'll give you a calorie burn guess. But I don't want to do that. I want something that does it for me, is what I'm saying. The problem with all this shit yeah. is battery life. Yeah. That's our that's our problem. Yeah. We can't fix it. Mm-hmm. We can't fix battery life. I want something that feeds off my kinetic energy that charges it. I go in a kinetic Fitbit. That's what I want. That's not enough energy, they say? That's, Fucking fix it, man. That's great. A kinetic, fix it. A kinetic Fitbit. I want a kinetic Fitbit. Once we get, like, wireless charging figured out, and I can just, like, put something in my car, in my tire of my mm-hmm. car, that'll use my car's tire power to charge my wristwatch, that's what I'm talking about. When this can last seven fucking days without me having to worry about it, then I'm walking. You know what I mean? This whole thing, put that shit away. Fuck on that. Uh, I mean, I'm all about wearing a bracelet yeah. that says work out, yeah. but it, it, the battery life is just, it kills it for me. If, if anybody out there has has some of these, has the, you know, the Jawbone Up, has, there, there's a new one, I think it's a, the, the Orb or some shit, Orbits, I don't know. If you have any of these, hit us up. I want to know what you think about it, what you like, what you don't like. Or some tips. Yeah, or some tips. Tips on how to charge it and remember. I mean, yeah. man. I, I think Apple in general needs to focus on battery life. I, I've heard the new iPhone. looks great. I, I'm going to buy one because I'm like two or two or three you years You had a behind. four. I got like a four, yeah. Grow I mean, up. Like, um, I'm a fucking caveman over here. I'm just chiseling on a stone tablet. Jesus. Um, I'm going to upgrade, but I want... I've been reading, like, they want to make it thinner so they have to sacrifice the battery. Fuck that! Don't say that. I can... You know what? Give me a thick one. Yeah. Give, give me battery. a girthy motherfucker. Well, you know what? Forget it. Yeah. Just get a case that has a battery. Yeah, that might... That might just do that. But I love the design. I don't, I'm, a, yeah. I'm a no-case motherfucker, you know? I, I love not having a case. I, I, th- I feel like if you're going to spend all this time... That's cute. If you're going to spend all this time designing a, a, a gorgeous phone then I don't want to wear a, ca- a case on it and I've never I have a, the four the glass what if phone. you drop it man never dropped it never broke I've it I've dropped mine shirt. twice yeah case saved it well I'm an adult no dropped it once didn't break you're getting a dog yeah get a case a dog will fuck it yeah. up yeah dog will I fuck mean, it up man fair enough but I also keep not, whatever point is I, I want a bigger phone with a better battery. I want to focus on battery. I don't want to be recharging. I'm on the go. God, I don't battery. want to have to bring a car. Look, everybody battery. wants a battery. Yeah. You know, everybody wants it. Give me that battery. We need a, you know, a new battery, man. We need yeah. a new battery. Yeah. You know what my friend tells me? My, my, our boy Malone. You what know, is, what is you he, know. Yeah, yeah, what does he say? He says uh, he knows he knows about stuff. You mm-hmm. know, he knows things. He says a ba- charging a battery is like really inefficient. Okay. Like the amount of power, like when you, let's say a battery takes a hundred. Mm-hmm. Of whatever the fuck, mega mega gigawatts. Yeah. When you plug it into the wall, it takes like a thousand to give a hundred to your battery. You know what I mean? I, like it's really inefficient. Mm-hmm. And he and he was saying that to, instead of char- I don't know how this works. I, I'm para para quoting in a really shitty way. He says that if if you took a train and moved it up a hill using energy and just held it at the top of a hill and then let it go, that's a more efficient use of energy than a battery. Like, shoving a train up a hill and then dropping it down the hill to get the power that we're going down, that's a more efficient use of what battery charging is. That's not the kinetic, kinetic is what you're talking about, kind of. Well, just... Or your uh, analogy. Like, whatever amount yeah. of watts it takes to move a train up a, up a hill, it's a lot. Yeah. And letting it go is very little, and then the energy it makes down the hill is way less. So it's fucked. It's a bad... It's bad. We need a better technology for batteries, for and sure. I, and I... And there's... It's weird. I was reading about... When to charge it and how many charges it has and why it's important to charge before it hits zero. Forget, you know what? No matter what you do, they're all fucked. Yeah. So forget about wasting your time on that. Make shit. it better. Okay, ready? Let's move on. Yeah. Let's ready to talk about socks? I Yeah, let's talk about them. This is my topic. You ready? Hit me. All right, so here's my life circa... Here's Alex Krasny's life circa five years ago. I'm bitching about socks. I know that. Why? Because I have time hop on my phone and time hop shows me my Instagrams for five years ago. And I Instagram five years ago or three years ago. I don't know how many years, years ago, like three, oh no, no, three, three, am I kidding? Eight, eight single socks that are all just a slightly different shade of tan laying in a row that all have no pair. They're all tan. 
They're all just a little fucking different. And a little different length, and a little different, like, lines cut in there. And the pairs are gone. I have a million socks that are all tan, that are not the same color tan. So I said, you know what, man? Fuck this life. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to buy 600 pairs of black socks, and all black pants, and never worry about it. This, this reminds me of a buddy of mine I went to college with, who only bought white shirts. And his reasoning was because he never wanted to do... He only had white clothes and light clothes. He never wanted to do laundry and like separate into darks and lights. So he just got lights. Just got lights. Well, if I, see, if I was that guy, I'd just get darks. Because then if you spill shit on him, you don't ruin your clothes. With his skin color, it looked better. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I got... So then... So after that moment, I'm like... I'm a black socks kind of guy. Black mm-hmm. socks all the time. Slight aside. If you're over the age of 21 and you still own any white socks, throw them out. And stop buying white socks. No, no, hold up. For athletic purposes. All right, if you're going to the gym, go to the gym. And tennis shoes in general. You're saying no, no white socks with tennis shoes. If you're if you're wearing okay, if you're wearing tennis shoes, okay, white socks, tennis shoes only. Just wanted to clarify. Yeah, you got it. Tennis shoes only. You know what I would say? Buy black tennis shoes and black socks only. That's what I would say. I would say fuck the white socks and blue. You don't want to accidentally put them on in, in a morning stupor. All of a sudden, you're wearing your dress shoes with white fucking gym socks. You're you're looking like an asshole. True. Just, just don't wear, don't have white socks for work. Do not, not, do not wear white socks anywhere but the gym, yeah. man. Or like doing the lawn. Yeah. Don't wear the white. You gotta dump it, man. I see people do it. I see it. You know, I, I wear white socks like, like I said, with the gym when I'm like in my the gym is in fine. sneakers. Sometimes. The gym is fine. Yeah. They're more comfortable. Is my experience. I mean, yeah, they're thick as fuck. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah, you're right. That's my problem with dress socks. Is I find they're not as comfortable. And after a day wearing dress socks. I feel like I've been wearing fucking socks all day. Do you know what I'm saying? I can feel that you that know, sock is I worn. don't go to the gym. It's been so long since I've worn white socks. Even when I'm not at the gym. I don't wear white socks. Oh, you yeah. Look, I put those away a long time ago. <sighs> Retired them. When I, when I became... Put them out behind when the I, shed. Be, when I stopped being a child, I put away childish things. <laughs> fucking you guys. <laughs> so, okay, anyway, back to my yeah. story. Uh, so, I bought all black socks. Mm-hmm. Then I started seeing these beautiful, colorful socks mm-hmm. at the store. I see them. Mm-hmm. There's, they're, they got the cool stripes, the argyles there, and I'm looking at them. My, eye, my pupils getting dilated. Going, these beautiful socks. Yeah, man. I mean, look, I, I'm doing it now. The, okay, the story, the story, you know, changes. So I'm like, man, how do you wear those and not just you spend all this money on them? You buy these socks, then you lose your left one. They go to the fucking the black hole where the socks go, and then you you wait. Broken. Your pair of socks is broken. You seen that South Park with the underpants gnomes? Step one, steal underpants. Step two, question mark. Step three, profit. No, you didn't do, uh, Yeah, I mean, I get the joke. Yeah, that, no, that's how I feel, is that, like, somebody's stealing my fucking yeah, one man, pants. The one, the right the, sock the, is the right sock, yeah. So, I'm like, what the hell? So, I fixed it. I fixed it up. What'd you do? Oh, I would love to hear this. I start bundling my socks before I wash them. Shit. Okay? Then I say this to people. They're like, you stupid motherfucker. You bundle socks and wash them. They don't get clean. They stay wet. No, you don't bundle them into a tennis ball. You just you the just top. tuck the top. I've done You this. just tuck the top. I've done this. You're ahead of me. I yeah. wish you told me whenever you figured it out, I wish you told well, me. Well, you know, I always find myself doing it by accident. Because what I what I would do is I get home from work and I I take my socks off and I just put them together and kind of throw them on the ground. I don't know why I'd have it, like a mental natural Put them together. Thing. And then I'll throw my laundry and I'll be like, oh fuck, like here what I go. What a great like, evolution. Put them right in the wash that way. And I never thought about it as a, as a bonus. I just kind Oh, of, it's I a bonus. Them. And then you know so when you they get wrinkly at that point. You're right. Yeah. But that's the point that goes around the top part of your cap. Yeah, they, it, it stretches yeah. out. The wrinkles don't matter there. And they dry out. They dry that, fine. That, they dry fine. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I do now. So now what do I do? I go to TJ Maxx and I buy the best colorful socks I can buy. Now I'm all in on colorful, crazy socks. You're a Maxinista. Absolutely. Yeah. Now here's the next. This is a real point. That was a backstory you, you didn't need to know. But now you know. Because, you know, maybe it was amusing. Fun fact. Yeah. Like this video if you think that was amusing. <laughs> um... How much is the right price to pay for a pair of socks? Not the fucking price that is price out there right now. Price per sock. You we're talking about what, Argyle's colorful socks. What I personally believe. Yeah, let's go. Per two pair, like per pair? One pair. One pair of Argyle socks. In my belief, $3. That's what I think the, the value... Is that the, this, the, 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 that's the top you'll, you'll pay? No, it's not. I mean, I, I pay more because they're always more. Okay. But what I think when I think about how much value is this sock, how much should it be? Mm-hmm. I think three dollars a pair. Yep. If I buy a five pack, it should be fifteen dollars. All right. And I I feel like it's much more expensive. They're they're usually five or more dollars a pair. Yeah, ten dollars a pair is not uncommon. That's what I'm saying. 
Yeah, socks are extremely overpriced. Yeah. And here, this is this is like this with ties and socks. They're very in the similar in the similar field here. Here's the thing. When was the last time you said, "Man, these socks are great, but they're so fucking cheap. They the rip." I've never said it. I've never said it. I've had a lot of pairs of socks ripped. They, they, yeah, they do rip. Yeah, all of even the good ones rip. Yeah. I mean, they take wear and tear. How long's a pair? Of, how how long do you expect a pair of socks to to last? A year? Year? Year and a half? A year and a half? Okay. Yeah. I don't know how many wears that is, but about a year and a half. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Uh, do you when you buy a nice pair that's you know eight dollars a pair? Mm -hmm. Do they last longer? Fuck no, they don't. don't so. They don't last any longer. They uh, are they a better design? Fuck no, they're Argyle socks, man. They're not a better design. Design, that's the thing with, like, the same thing with ties, all right? You could buy a tie for $85. Yeah. Why should you? You shouldn't. You should not. No. Because you find a tie that you think looks cool. You should become a fashion mogul and get them sent to you for free. What? Oh, but, but like me? Yeah. <laughs> You, you get the, you get a tie, you find a pattern you like, you buy that tie. It doesn't matter if it's a $5 tie or an $80 tie. No one knows how much your tie costs. Yeah. There's no logo on your tie that says this is a Tommy Hilfiger tie. No such thing exists. Get the cheapest tie that looks good on you. That's it. And you're saying the same thing for socks. I'm saying absolutely the same thing for socks. And I, I agree. I think they're still overpriced is the problem. Well, TJ Maxx, man. TJ Maxx. I mean, I can't... Rec they should be paying me. TJ Maxx, hook me up, man. I will pump you up. I'm a Kohl's guy, so hook... Get, Coles get is good yeah, too. Yeah, but you go to Tisha Max, you find the 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 Tommy Hill figure, the Calvin Klein three pair for seven fifty. You know what blows me away that's really expensive is underwear, like briefs and boxer briefs. Where do you buy them? Tisha Max? Yeah, fucking Coles, Tisha Max. They're always like they're. It's not like they're they're expensive in the big picture, but I feel like I'm they're like, more well, than you think. They're, they're more, more than, than you, than you think. think. And nobody. The thing about them is, who gives a shit what yeah. design you wear? Nobody cares. You know what it is? They're underneath. It, it's it's like. It's. I think here's my theory: is that it's the shit that you your parents got you when you were growing up. You know, like your parents buy you underwear, your parents buy you like white t-shirts. You bought they buy you socks. You're hit by costs you're not used to. Is what you're saying. Yeah. So it, to you, it seems like an extravagant expense. Yeah. Whereas you're, when you're in high school, I like them when they were free. Now yeah. you got to pay dollars a pair. Fuck this. Yeah. And like in your head, you're like, oh, my mom bought twenty of these. They're probably fucking two bucks yeah. each. Yeah. No, you're fucking wrong. You know what? When I was when I grew up. Yeah. Okay, and got out of my parents. You know. I'm not fully... Uh, my parents still do a lot for me. I'm not saying anything. But, yeah, they're good people. But, uh... Nice towels. Yeah? You're... Listen, anybody who's younger than, you know, 17 or whatever, you're living with your parents, the towels your parents have, they're better than the towels you're going to be able to afford for many, many years. That thread count, though. It's... It's crazy. I'm like, well, fuck, to fuck a towel. Yeah. I go... I like... Well, I look at a towel at uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. Mm. $35. Yeah. Get out of town. Walmart. Four dollar towels. Okay, I buy them up. You wipe yourself with them. You're wetter after you wipe yourself. <laughs> you're just moving the water around your body. Not only that, yeah. it's worse than the. You're wetter. You're covered in red hair now. Yeah. You're covered in fur. You're a furry wet dog now. And it's a lot of shit like this. So you don't like. You know what else fucked on me? Pillows. When I got to when I got to college originally, I was like, oh, I'll just fucking buy some pillows at the fucking dollar store. I don't give a shit. You know. My neck hurt for weeks. You give a shit. Trust you me. You give a shit now. You got to. You know what? I didn't play. I didn't play with pillow. pillows. I got. I got the. Uh, I got the Tempur Pedic. Oh, I'm gonna quick. My my first like the memory foam, son. You know, I just got. I just got a law school, so I'm like, you know, still waiting to get some some sick cash coming in here. When I get like that first big sick paycheck, it's a a plush ass bed, a plush ass pillow, and that high thread count. You know. Bed sheet. I spent three thousand dollars on my bed. But I think you're a genius. You live. You you you, you know. Yeah. Six years ago, I spent three thousand dollars on my bed. Yeah. I said, you know what? I, I set a budget first. I'm coming out. I don't know a fucking thing. I'm like, you know what? Three thousand dollars my bed budget. Yeah. That's how much I want to. Your spend. BB. My B. My yeah. Yep, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, let's do it. And I spent that much, and I have that bed now, and I love it. It's all foam. Oh, I love it's that all shit. nice sheets. Mm -hmm. That thread count. You gotta go. You know what it is about Egyptian cotton? Tell me about it. I know everything about it because I oh, did all this research. Because it's the best. So regular cotton has short threads. So they take a thread. They take threads, and I don't know what three hundred. I don't know what three hundred means. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much it is per what. But that's how many how many like interlocking threads there are in a certain you, measurement. You know, there's there's numbers, and the higher numbers better. Yeah, and you know what a good number. Three hundred thread count is like the minimum good sheets. Mm -hmm. Now that's cotton sheets. Three hundred thread count. That's how many threads are in a certain amount of space. I don't know how many it is, but three hundred is a good start. Um, Egyptian cotton has longer threads, mm -hmm. which means when they thread it together, they are stronger because they go longer. 
So Egyptian cotton isn't softer by any means, but it's more durable. So you want to get Egyptian cotton because you only want to buy the best sheets one time. You want to buy 500 thread count Egyptian cotton sheets. It's going to cost you a shitload. Buy them and that's the last thing you buy. This is the opposite of the socks argument. Spend more money on this shit. Yeah, yeah. because a bed sheets will last you, you know, 10 years. Yeah. A, mat, a bed will last you 20 years. No problem. Yeah. So spend your money there and get the best bed and lay on it for 20 years never replace it. And you, you spend crazy amounts of time in your bed like and your wanna, and your sleep is important your yeah. sleep quality is important to you i one of the things i started doing i was getting this health craze which i want in a fitness tracker is tracking my sleep you put it like by your pillow and it tells you like your wakefulness and how you slept throughout the night yeah and it it you, I, and you, will, you will notice the correlation yeah you toss and turn it more than you think you ever sleep on the floor just to test no i haven't done that do it yeah i want you to do it i'll do it i don't give a fuck <laughs> <laughs> All right, what, should we move on? Let's move on. All right, what do you, what do you got next? Short sleeve button ups. Oh yeah, so I, I thought we'd throw another fashion uh, thing here. I I notice all, in a lot of movies, a lot of shows, uh, and some people have seen them. They wear sh- the short sleeve button up. You know, it, it, the Hawaiian shirt type looking shirt, but it's like you know, like white. It's fine, and I think it looks fucking weird. I think you look like a math teacher. I think you've got. It doesn't look quite right. Like you look like a teacher when you're wearing a short sleeve button up. You look awkward. And is there a way to make it look better, or do you can only can you only wear it under certain circumstances? How do you know when you're appropriate? I, I just I don't think I can wear it. Yeah. Okay. So the way I look at it, yeah. I I have I'll tell you I have exactly two mm-hmm. short sleeve button up shirts. Yeah. Um, when I wear them, I wear them casual. I rock them casual. Yeah. I go with the jeans, untucked, button up. Yep. Maybe a loose tie. Um, never, I never wear them formally. So you rock a tie with it? A loose, well, yeah. not always, sometimes. Yeah. But if I do wear a tie, it's a loose tie, top button, unbuttoned, uh-huh. loose forehand, hand, kind of like that whole we talked last week, mm-hmm. the I don't give a shit, but I do kind of a look. I'm actually literally rocking that look right now. You're looking, you're doing it now. Is it a short, yeah. no, well, no, I, I rolled my You sleeve. manually made a short sleeve shirt. Manually. So you're doing it. If this is a short sleeve shirt, you'd be doing looking the same. Yeah, but it's got that like weird, like, like a higher cuff, like it's up higher. by your bicep. It is. All right, yeah. But yeah, I, I rock no, casual. Um, if you do it formal, if you, you know, bl- like slacks or khakis with a belt tucked mm-hmm. in, formal, I think you do look a little too kind of geeky. It's kind of a geeky look. I think that, you know, I mean, it's a mature look. Yeah. I think it makes you look mature. Um, I think you got to have the right l- general look yourself. It helps too. if you have a nice, like, like if you have a nice top. Like if your torso is like, yeah. if, you're, if you're built... There- I feel like it looks better there, than if you're there's like a mo- sloppy. There's a movie. I think it's called uh, not Brick. Half Nelson, I think, with Ryan Gosling. Right? I think he wears, he's a teacher, but he does. He has that look, and he wears a tie with like a short sleeve. Mm-hmm. And I think he pulls it off in that movie because he's got that kind of like haphazard, like I care but I don't care look. Yeah, you gotta have that look. But he's got un- untucked, I think. Yeah, you gotta you have the look. You gotta have that look. Yeah. It's kind of I mean, okay, short sleeves are, are are casual. Yeah, they're more casual than long sleeves mm-hmm. because yeah, you know, it's it's more like I don't you kind of I'm, lo- I'm going loose. This I'm is this is a personal observation. Tell me if I'm wrong on this one. Okay, I don't. I think if you're gonna go short sleeve though, you cannot have a front pocket. Hmm. I think I think the front pocket makes it look a sp- like you gotta have. No pocket, looks a little more casual. The front pocket to me says the, that weird mix. I don't know. You know, I, I pay no attention to the pocket. No attention. I always notice the pocket. I think I think no pocket says a little more, like, fun. Pocket says a little more business to me. Hmm. Yeah. I guess the best way to tell is to find a hip brand mm-hmm. and see what they're doing with short sleeve button-ups. Yeah. And, like, if Tommy Hilfiger is not putting pockets, then I'd say that's the thing. And if he is, then i say, that, you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, I never, like, the pocket, to me, is so, it's just a design choice. You know, it doesn't matter. Nobody uses it. It's got no use. You don't keep your pens in it? You keep anything in there? No, I don't fucking keep anything in Yeah, nobody keeps, nobody yeah. puts soaps in there. It's, it's, uh... Well, well, hit us up. Tell, tell us if you want any short sleeve shirts. What do you think about you? What do you yeah. think? I got hey. one guy at work. I got one guy yeah. at work. He rocks them constantly. Really? Yeah, he, and he kind of goes real formal with them. He tucks them in, mm-hmm. and he goes real formal. What do you think? He pulls it off? Yeah, you know, he, he's a really serious guy. Yeah. So I think he does pull it off because he's very, like, he's very serious. He's so serial. He is serious. Yeah. But I don't, I don't like the look. You know, I th- I wish he was more, I wish he would casual it up. Yeah. He could still be a serious guy, but kind of make it, you know, like, kind of like, I, look, I got a nice button-up shirt, but I don't give a shit. Yeah. You got to have that kind of thing to make it not seem so intentional. I like that. 
So yeah, hit us up avdpodcast at gmail.com. Let us know if you uh, you. I'm worried about putting that email up because then we'll get a bunch of spam and shit. I don't think so. Do we care? It's not that much. No, yeah. I don't care. All right, I'll put it up. Yeah. You can also comment anywhere, obviously. Comment. Yeah, we'll, we'll hunt it down. It's just I guess easy, people who listen to it, not on YouTube, they, mm-hmm. they don't have, they can't comment. So yeah, you can tweet at us, of course. Yeah. All right. So okay. what, what's up next? What else do you want to talk well, about? Well, this is your topic here, uh, porn. Yeah, so I, I read this article the other day. It was, this, this guy was religious, um, and he was talking about... This guy. The, what the, guy? This guy. I don't know. I, the article I read, like, like I read it while I was studying for the bar, and I was thinking about it over time. You read an article while studying for the bar? Yeah, it was on Facebook. Listen, you have some time, or I'm not just always fucking studying. It felt like it. When though. you fail the bar, you'll know why. Fuck. Because I read this fucking article? Yeah. So, anyway, I read, the, I read this article, and this guy was, it was, his message was religious, but it was basically saying that when you watch porn and you're in a relationship, you're cheating. And... And at first, I was like, that's stupid. Like, everybody... Like, porn is a very common thing. Like, a lot of people watch it. Couples watch it together. But then... I, and his thing was, like, rel- it's religious. Like, you're adultering. You know, like, you're breaking your marriage vows. And I, I didn't think of it that way. I thought of it more, like, philosophically. Like... And, and I'm not thinking of it so much as, will your significant other mind? But I broke it down to, you know, what what is cheating, really? Like, what is cheating? Cheating, to you know, to me, is doing something that you know would hurt your significant other's feelings... And make her jealous, basically. Hey guys, right around now, the audio gets a little bit garbled for about a minute and a half. Uh, this happens every time in our podcast at around the same time, 55 to 57 minutes. I'm not sure why. I'm working on it. I'm in chat. I'm in talks with the support staff of the software I use, and I hope we'll get it fixed. For now, I thought I'd just cut it out and paraphrase what I said. During this part, I, I just brought up uh, an imaginary situation where a person has a hand fetish. Um, then I suspected that's not a real thing. Uh, Yuri thought it was. I googled it. Turns out it is a real thing. People have hand fetishes. But anyway, if you're if you have that and your spouse knows you have it, then every time that you shake hands with a woman, she needs to be nervous and kind of feel like you might be cheating on her. And depending on how how that that plays out. So we're gonna pick up right about there, uh, starting in a second. And I'm sorry for the inconvenience. We're working on it. You have to shake hands with people sometimes. Yeah. But now, every time you shake hands with a girl who's attractive... Your girlfriend's like... You, she's got to be going, well, does he, think, does, she, does he think her hands are better yeah. than mine? You know, like, what's going on there? And that's... that's Is it cheating? I mean, maybe that's... I don't know. P- porn is such a... Uh, no, porn. Let's have a porn, though. Yeah. Watching and, pornography. And, and the reason... One of the other... I actually forgot to mention this at the top, at the top of this, is that... Have you seen the movie Don John or heard of it? Yeah, I hated it. I fucking hated it, man. I and that was a that was like a big part of that movie. Basically, it was kind of the premise of the movie in a weird way. Yeah, that movie fucking sucked. I you know I didn't hate it. I liked it, but I hated it. why did you hate it? Man, you know, let's not get into it. I don't. I don't want to. Yeah. Let's not talk about it. We can if you guys want to know, we can talk about it another time. But but uh, it made me think about this whole thing. In well, general. Yeah, definitely yeah. about it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I was like, well, it's always kind of been a, a thing among guys that like, well, everybody masturbates, right? Like, everybody masturbates. It, it's a generally normal human behavior. But then these things made me think about it. Like, like what is... Are you cheating on your significant other if you masturbate to porn? You know? Yeah, I mean, it depends. It really depends yeah. a lot. I mean, it depends on why you're doing it, I guess. Yeah. You know, like, if you are... And I think that's a great, uh, that's a great point. Y- yeah. You know, I mean, sometimes, like, the thing is you... You gotta look at yourself. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta empty your Johnson mm-hmm. sometimes. Clean the pipes. You gotta do it because you know. Well, okay. I don't know if you guys know how erections work, but we'll tell you how they work. If you're a guy like Yuri, who gets raging erections all the time, <laughs> and then he's trying to study, all the time, and he's trying to study for the bar. That's gonna be great. Now, man. have you ever when, studied? When people Google me on Google, it's gonna be like Yuri Smolinski raging erections. <laughs> have you studied for the bar on an erection before? I. It might have happened. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. It might make it hard to study. An NRB. I call NRBs are no reason boners. You've probably gotten them. When you get, yeah. up, when you get up at the end of class and you got one and you don't know why. You don't know why. You put the backpack over it trying it's to walk It's weird out. because the, the, the male brain is fucked up. Real, Real fucked up. You'll get one thought yeah. and it's like, that's a hot chick. You get a boner and you don't even remember you thought of that because it was so fast, but your dick doesn't care. Sometimes it's it's literally like I get excited about leaving a class or like, you know, I'm like, oh man, I can't wait to get out of, out of here. Boring. And all of a sudden you look down and you're like, fuck. You can feel it. You don't need to look. The, the NRB. You look. The NRB. Like, oh, forget about being in class. Yeah. I'm saying you're like looking at a book and you're studying law and all yeah. of a sudden you get an erection. Mm-hmm. That shit short circuits your brain. Yeah. Because now while you're studying, you're reading about like torts reform and shit. Now you got pictures of Kim Kardashian's ass coming up in your mind. Yeah. Because your dick starts interfering with your mind. 
And sometimes it might help to get rid of it. Yeah. Because then you can think clearly, you know. In that case, it's not cheating. You know, if it's taking the place of your, you know, sexual relationship with your, your girlfriend or wife, mm-hmm. then maybe it is. You know, who decides? I, I That's think, the question. I, I think you're right. I think, I think it's a combination. I like the way you put it. I think it's a combination of what does she think about it and why are you doing it? Why are you doing it? Yeah. It's important. You know, I mean... Are you doing it because you, you know I don't know why it is it is it an escape a, a getaway from your are you not satisfied with your sex life are you you know what what is it what's the purpose of it? I think really think about it yeah because you, it's it's psychologically yeah. cheating you know in a way kind of I mean you're looking at and that's what the article is saying is like you're looking at these other women and imagining what it'd be like to be with them we got a friend speaking of masturbating <laughs> okay we got a friend that's I don't want I, I don't want to I don't want to out him how all the good conversations but we got a friend stuff. yeah who I know very well. Mm-hmm. He's when he he uses masturbating to the point of orgasm, but not, not quite there. Mm-hmm. A, cum, a, a, a cum jam. A, an, let's call it edging. <laughs> okay. He uses that as a stimulant <clears throat> to do more homework and work. Okay, so when he's working hard and it's like two a.m. and he's like getting a little sleepy, uh-huh. he'll masturbate. Just about to the point where he's gonna, you know, I, gonna I blow. Don't, I don't know who this is, but you got to tell me. Off <laughs> I'll tell off you later. I'll tell you later. Yeah. And then he'll stop mm-hmm. and then do homework. That's some real weird shit. And then when he, and then when it wears off and he gets sleepy, yeah. he does it again. And then at the end of the night, when he's done with his homework, then he rewards himself. Okay. No, no. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! I I used to just order a pizza, and that I asked my him, reward. I'm like, does that work? Yeah. He goes, Oh yeah, it works oh, really oh, great. Oh yeah. And I be- you know, I believe it does because yeah. you definitely get a, you definitely like. You're not feeling sleepy when you're, like, almost there. You know what I mean? So he gets jacked. But all I'm saying is the level of study you're getting there is not really worthwhile because it, it seems you're, like you're a lot of, short-circuited. It seems like a lot of weird work for, like, uh, take get some coffee. It's definitely, it's definitely odd. But, yeah. you guys, tell us if you do that because I, I'm curious. You know what? He can't be the only one who's telling us. Tell Crass if you do that. Tell, put it on YouTube, yeah. man. Yeah, just put, whatever. Unless you're a minor. And put a link to their Facebook page. Unless you're a minor. That's the you rule. Can, well, you well, can, you can tell you us. Can tell you us. Can, yeah, but no, don't, yeah, no don't show picks, us. please. Yeah. Anyway, mo- moving on. But I think it's interesting. Think about, you know, I don't know. I think it's a very interesting psychological question. It is interesting. Yeah. Tell us what you think about the, the che- is porn yeah. cheating. Tell us and, about And it. if you've seen Don John and like that made you think of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Talk so. about it. It's it's an interesting thing. It's different every time. We you know? fucking love feedback. We Give us the feedback, yeah. guys. You're watching us. Say something. Uh, I can have feedback? Give us some feedback. Yeah. All right. What's, what else we got here? I know well, we let's see the time. Where are we at? We're at 59 minutes. Let's say one more topic and then maybe picks. Picks of the week. Well, let's just do picks of the week because we started this five minutes late. All right. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, so I, I got I like I like to do picks of the week. I don't know if you guys like like this. Uh, I like to do things that I'm into. Look, they like it. Into. They like what they what we tell them to like. They like. You guys love it. So obviously for movies, we're recommending Expendables 3. Watch it. Go see it. Fucking sick action flick. As a as a side, I've also watched Hercules in theaters either with The Rock. Good movie, fun, better than I thought. If you watch it on DVD, maybe don't go see it in theaters. But now I, a show. I was thinking about this whole uh, Ferguson incident with the cops and the and the guns. As a show, I've been watching Luther. It's on Netflix. Seasons, excuse me, one, two, and three. Now Luther is uh, featuring Idris Elba. Do you know who that is? Idris Elba. He's the black guy. The black guy. Yeah, he's in. He's in the wire. He's in. Yeah, he's in the wire. He's the in. Office. He's in the office. Yeah, he was a interim. Uh, On the British or the American. The American. He was uh, in it for one season. He was the black guy in the office uh, who took over the office for a while. He was uh, like the acting. I don't know I don't what it was. Him. He was in it. But he was sick in the wire. He's great in a bunch of movies. He's great in. Uh, he's in Thor. He's in whatever. Pacific Rim, but. So he's in the show, he's in this cop, and he's kind of unstable, he's like a genius. But in the show, I never, I didn't realize this until I started watching it, in, in like, Britain, cops don't have guns. They don't carry weapons. Clubs only. Yeah, they don't carry weapons. Just, any weapons. just baseball bats. Because they have, they have such stricter gun laws there. And I just thought that was so interesting, like how, what a different relationship the cops had with citizens, and what, how different all the, all the chases and things went down. You know, like, there were scenes where I'm like, just pull your gun and set home freeze. And I'm like, oh, they don't have any. Mm-hmm. And I was just thinking, like, what, like, what would it be like if, if that was like... You gotta know, have a lot of cardio. Gotta have a lot of cardio. Yeah. Well, it, it itself was fit as fuck. The dude was jacked. But the show is great. He's incredible. It's very dramatic. So what's... It's a British-based cop show? Yeah. So it's... it's First of all, BBC is the best because their seasons are like six episodes 
like very tight arcs, you know? Like for an American TV show, you'll have 20 episodes. You, nobody knows when it's going to end. Could end in 20 years, could end in 10 years. They're just kind of going, meandering. British shows are like, we have an end. We've already had planned it. We're going to film our seasons in arcs, maybe six to eight episodes. And every season is going to be tight. You know, it's like no wasted minutes. I love that. I love right. that style of TV. I don't true, watch it. True Detective is like that. But yeah, Luther is great. Check it out. It's on Netflix. Uh, it's Every episode is an hour long. Uh, a great, like, crime drama. Every episode's awesome. I love it. Check it out. Hmm. That's my, my TV pick of the week. You got any picks? Sure. Well, okay. Yeah. I'll tell you. I got a, I got a story, not a pick. Yeah. I watched Cabin Fever 2. You watch Cabin... you seen Cabin Fever? I've seen Cabin Fever 1. Okay. So I'm a big fan of uh, sick movies that are, like, aimed to disgust. Mm. I'm a big fan. I'm not. I can handle a lot. Okay. Yeah. I can handle a lot. So here's my story. So Cabin Fever is one of my top horror movies yeah. and if you don't know what it's about I don't want to spoil too much but the thing is it's, it's a bacteria it's a disease the kids go to the cabin like a classic serial killer movie but they get a disease there a flesh eating virus that makes them real disgusted you know it's a, it's a gross movie yeah. I've seen it I, I love it I've seen it many times it's kind of like j- a joke almost mm-hmm. there's a sequel so I'm having din. I'm about to have dinner. I'm like, I'm gonna cook some tacos. You fucking idiot! And I'm gonna like, I'm oh, what movie did I watch? I pull yeah. up Netflix and I'm looking. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Cabin Fever two. I love uh, the first one. Now I'm not. I know what I'm getting into. I don't care. Like, yeah. That's. Uh, I'm so used to this kind of like mm-hmm. do horrible shit. I can eat dinner and like be okay with watching Cabin Fever. Yeah. So I put on Cabin Fever two and I'm eating my. I'm cooking my tacos and the movie's going and you know some gross shit starts happening and I'm like okay okay that's, it's a gross thing I'm eating my I'm cooking my beef then I get my tacos already on the table and I'm about halfway through the movie which is like probably the worst time to start eating because mm-hmm. the movie's about to get sick yeah now all the all the sex and drugs out of the way they're about to fuck yeah now way. they're about to start having their dicks fall off with yeah. flesh eating leprosy oh my god so I'm eating my tacos and I'm like taking you know I'm eating my my, my, my things did I say beef before there's no beef in my talk. I don't, I don't remember you saying beef. It's, but... I said beef, and yeah. I'm vegetarian. It's tofu yeah. I'm making. I'm not kidding. I Actually, there's no beef. Yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just so you can relate. So I'm eating my tacos, and I'm watching this movie, and unex- completely unexpectedly to me, it movie's so disgusting, I could not... I, I got... I couldn't eat my fucking food. Wow. And I've, I've watched, like, one or two of these movies with you, and I, I couldn't believe it. And the fact that you were turned off yeah. says a lot. And, you know, I'm not trying to say I'm a hardball or something, but, like, this is weird that, like, I, I planned, I'm like, I'm going to eat dinner while watching this yeah. disgusting movie. That's my mentality going in. What was, what was then, that? Sorry, go ahead. I was going what was that one movie I had to get drunk to finish? The, Serbian film. A Serbian film. Jesus. Guys, if you want to see a movie that you, oh, oh that'll, that'll fuck you up for the rest of your life, a Serbian film. That's the title. A Serbian film. Check that out. Good it, luck. I, I had to get horribly drunk to get through it. It was a tough one. It was bad. Oh my god. Oh, I don't want to talk about it. Keep so, going, yeah. so yeah, so I had to put my tacos away. I had to feed him with the dog. <laughs> Quasi, you can have my tacos. Mm-hmm. I finished the movie anyway, and that movie affected me deeply for, for days after. Is it Eli Roth? Eli Roth directed the first one, I think. I don't even know who directed it. Yeah. I don't know. Either one. Yeah. But I finished it, and it was... The movie was horrible. Much worse than the first. They really upped the gr- grotesque disgusting scenes. Yeah. Is, is it the first one that has Sean Hunter from Boy Meets World? Yes. What a weird role for him. I don't know. I never I mean, saw I, I don't know what else, Ryder Strong, I think his name Ryder is. Ryder Strong. Yeah, great name. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, wait, is that his name in... That's his real name. That's his real name? Yeah. Who's Ty Hunter? Ty Hunter? What did you just say? Sean Hunter. That's his name in Boy Meets World. Oh, that's his character. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ryder Strong. That's He's in the first one and that movie's actually, I recommend it. It's awesome. It wasn't uh, bad. It's the second sick. movie, I don't recommend. Uh, it's awful. It made me sick, and that's impressive. Now, awful as a, it's probably expected to be bad as a movie. It's a horrible movie. I mean, the the the, the scenes where like the the gross the gross out scenes yeah. are fucking insane. They're disgusting as hell. They made me sick. Wow. And then on my way to work on Monday, the weekend after I watched it, the whole car ride, I couldn't shake it. And I got to work and I couldn't even have my coffee in the morning because it was so bad. Jesus Christ. And then there's a third movie I found out later. I think there's... Yeah, they're, they're going. So I'm going to have to watch that too, unfortunately. Take one for the team. I got to watch it. Um, I, I don't know. I, I guess I got, I got one last pick of the week. I, now that I have free time again... I make it fast, I got to pee. Real fast. I've been playing some vids again. I haven't played vids in a, vids, a video man. game. 
uh, start playing Assassin's Creed 4. And I was somebody who played the first, like the second one, and like I think the third one. Not impressed. Love the fourth one. The reason why I bring it up is because, one, it's great. It's real fun. You're a pirate. You fucking love it. Pirates. I, I think it's $10 right now on like Gamefly or some shit. So if you want a cheap, fun game, if you haven't played it yet, pick it up, 10 bucks. It's I'm having a fucking blast. You can read reviews out on the line. It's not my, I'm not going to do that here, but uh, it's, my, it's one of my picks of the week. So check it out. Check those out. Don't check Cabin Fever 2 out if you value your life. Yeah. But if you're a sick fuck. If you like the sick out. movies, then it's definitely a sick one. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a good conclusion to our podcast, I think. Yeah. Uh, great job, uh, me and you. Great job. The high five. Follow me on uh, Twitter at Trial by Yuri. And you can follow Krasny at... Lex Krasny. Mm-hmm. Hook me up. And then, yeah, send us feedback at avdpodcast.com. I'm sorry, avdpodcast.com. AVD Podcast.